it was um, uh, what we regard as the Right Livelihood Award was a great recognition of the work that we have been doing for the last uh, 20 years. This was our first international award. And one of the very important things that has happened is that though the organization got the award, it was seen as a kind of a recognition of the work of communities, NGOs and civil society groups whom we represented in the court. So, you know, everyone felt empowered and happy because the collective work of everyone got recognized by the Right Livelihood Foundation. So, in a way, it energized us, but most importantly, it energized a lot of other groups and communities who were taking up these issues or are continuously taking up issues of environmental justice as a recognition of the work globally. Uh, and that, I think, was the great impact of receiving the award itself. In terms of success, I would say the fact that today communities have the ability to question uh, destructive development itself has been the greatest achievement. That today communities across India feel that they can engage with the law and question activities which they think are detrimental to the environment as well as the livelihood, as well as the culture um, and overall environment. And that I think has been um, the most significant impact of our work that people are willing to question decisions of the government which they feel is not correct and they feel empowered and though it is a work in progress because of the large number of issues as well as communities but I think the fact that we have been able to successfully represent a lot of them um, and and bring up these issues and that has led to an evolution of a kind of environmental jurisprudence which has had an impact not just locally but also nationally and globally. So in terms of today's challenges in terms of climate change and others I think the very fact that we've been able to help communities and affected people in raising their voice in questioning uh, illegal or wrongful act has been the greatest success. Um, unfortunately, with every success also comes challenges and uh, of late uh, there has been backlash from the government and other agencies which have been questioning the, the very fact that people are going to court seems to have become a criminal act. And I think this criminalization of litigation is deeply problematic because at the end of the day people are using a constitutional means of expressing dissent. And there can be nothing more legal than people questioning wrongful act by going to a court of law and, and using legal means, uh, institutions that have been set up by parliament. And so to that extent, if one criminalizes litigation, then what I think is that it is going to have a serious repercussion on people overall fight for justice. And I think that is where we recently see a lot of challenges coming where not only organizations like us, but also grassroots groups are facing um, uh, serious um, constraint in terms of uh, their working, in terms of carrying out their activities. And I hope that, you know, situation changes and, you know, we are able to raise our voice significantly. See, one, one aspect that we've always seen is that the, the fight to save the environment is not necessarily always linked to carbon sink or climate change. It's about their own life and it's about their livelihood. So to that extent, a lot of that discussion that happens within the air-conditioned rooms of COP, where the ultimate decision or the real decision that is taken is when will they have the next COP? Right, really, and nothing concrete comes out. But at the same time, you know, for communities that are fighting to save the coast, the forest, it's a more direct fight. And to that extent, it remains unaffected largely by what is happening at the global negotiation on climate and COPs, which is happening. So um, fortunately, unfortunately, a lot of the local struggles are not really linked to what is happening at the global level. So, so therefore, what we have 
found that you know there are victories that are possible at the local level at the regional level and at the national level and that is something where i see uh, a lot of hope still there because the institutions are there the laws are still in place despite the challenges and the communities still are very clear that they will fight to save the resources on which their life depends um see the world overall will move towards industrialization and india is no exception to it at the same time what is very critical is that there are examples globally of organi- of uh, nations that have industrialized and if yet maintain high environmental standards so even if you look at the european countries if you look at norway if you look at many of the countries well they have been able to industrialize at the same time enforce environmental laws strictly so i think the key to ensuring that there is sustainable growth let's put it like this as well as taking industrialization together is to first of all ensure that your laws are updated you know and keeping not only implementation in mind but also the current environmental realities so if laws are enacted which are um, of a very high standard and you also put in the required amount of resources for ensuring enforcement of this law it is very much possible to achieve economic growth and at the same time protect the environment today india is among the least industrialized nations in the world there is no doubt about it at the same time even with this level of industrialization its level of air pollution is the highest in the world its water quality is pathetic right so if you look at it here even with such minimal level of industrialization if you manage to pollute the rivers and the water and the air then there is a need of stricter standards so i would always emphasize that this is a time where you can industrialize but you have need to really have stricter laws and even better enforcement and if you have both of them then it's very much possible to achieve economic growth also i think it's very important to understand that long term economic growth is possible only if you protect the environment you know without environmental protection it's not possible to attain economic growth you cannot have a uh, people working in industries if they are falling sick because they are inhaling dirty air you lose large number of working days principally because people are drinking bad water so therefore it is not a choice whether you want to protect the environment or have economic growth economic growth and development is only possible if you protect the environment no country in the world has actually developed if it has kept its environment dirty and because the most important part of it is human health if you have clean air and water you will have healthy workers and that worker is critical to a sustainable economic growth it's been a good um opportunity also for me to have interacted with sakshi for the reason that i think the subject that she is doing her research on is very very important which is on forest rights act you know it's a path breaking law which empowers local communities to protect conserve and regenerate the forest itself but most important gives them the right and uh, you know i have been working also for the last since the law was enacted on implementation of the forest rights act and it was good to um, you know in a way interact and in some way advise her because what she is doing is exactly going down to the grassroots and seeing how the law is actually been implemented and that's something where i see as a lawyer that if those inputs also come to me you know later on it will be of great use in the work that i do at the same time i am able to also share my experience as a lawyer with her uh, you know in terms of what all documents and information let's put it like this information that is critical mm-hmm. in order to show the effectiveness of the forest rights act so it's a, been a very good experience and i see that in future also there'll be greater opportunities to interact and collaborate
as uh, what what yesterday when i interacted and even last year when i came in i think what is what i learned and what i have shared with them is the is the fact that that research that they do must also help bring about change in the society it's not something that comes out only as an academic paper it's something that can inform local action a change policies and i say also can you know influence legislation as well as litigations that you know people do because what they are collecting from across the world i've seen from cameroon i've seen from ghana i've seen from ivory coast to kenya is a whole lot of information about natural resource management and i think that uh, information is something which is very critical uh, which should be communicated to groups and civil society groups government and others because that can lead to change in policies for the betterment of uh, society environment and nature itself